Hi, welcome to the second part of this backend system design. In the first part, we saw that how we should think about the major components that will lead us to the design that we desire. And I also showed you how the application that we have developed for where is my motivation that features what are required. Now, before starting this video, uh, if you are new here, I will request you to subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell button so that you will get the content as we deliver. Okay? So, let us start with this today's class. So, now we have developed the logic or the component idea that what major components we require. So, I will give you a overview of the architecture that I have used for my server for where is my motivation. Okay? So, first is your core is your machine, your Linux machine that I have used is AWS Amazon Web Services and here I have installed Ubuntu in the EC2 instance. Okay? So, EC2 is the instance that is provided by the Amazon where we can install operating systems. Okay? It is like the virtual machines that we discussed earlier. So, I am using Ubuntu server here. Okay? So, this is a Linux machine. So, now I have got my OS running on my remote server. Now, I have to think about the various programs that I need to run on this server. So, the first program that I have mentioned here is NGINX. So, NGINX is like a proxy server. What do I mean by this? That whenever a request come to the Ubuntu server on port 80 for example, then NGINX will listen to that port and then it will forward that request to the node application. Node is my main server program that is running. Here is my logic that I have written and here it connect with the database. So, this is the actual application of your backend. NGINX, why I have used NGINX here and what are these two nodes you will understand shortly. Okay? So, I have got my node server running, it has got my logic for my application and NGINX is a proxy server that is all the request first comes to the NGINX and then it is redirected to the actual server program. Okay? Now, this node program has two things, your logic and the data that you have persisted. So, for the logic you have got scripts in JavaScript, I have used TypeScript. Okay? Now, for the data persistence, I am using MongoDB. So, MongoDB server I am running on the same machine and in the same machine, I am running my MongoDB server. So, node locally connect to the MongoDB server and communicate for any data exchange. Okay? Also, in my laptop that I want to for example, connect to the MongoDB using GUI in order to visualize the data and also to administer things for the MongoDB. I am using Mongo Compass. Okay? So, Mongo Compass connect to your MongoDB server and you can access the collections that are there in the Mongo server in the GUI. Okay? So, first is this your machine and then you have got your proxy server, your server and your database and you connect with the database. Now, we have to think about the client. Okay? Your client is your Android application, your iOS application, web apps. Okay? So, now the client has to connect to this machine. Okay? So, you will have some domain name. For example, I have got where is my motivation. So, this domain name will be mapped to this IP address of this machine. For that, I have to manage the DNS. Okay? So, Amazon AWS provides route 53 just like EC2 it has got route 53. Here I will manage my domain name and route 53 is helping to connect with our machine by the client using the domain name. Okay? Now, we also want to enable HTTPS. Okay? 
for that we need SSL certificates. So CertPort is a framework that provide us with the SSL certificate that is free of cost. So I am using CertBot. So request will come to the route 53, it will translate the domain name to the IP address. This IP address will use a CertBot to provide the SSL certificate and this will go to the NGX instance which will redirect to the node application. Okay. Now the client can communicate with the application that you are running and also you can persist the data. Now we have to think about how we can update this logic that we have written in the node server and also how to install all these application. So to do that we have got our local terminal. Okay. So in our laptop we can access the remote AWS Ubuntu instance using SSH connection. Okay. So we will connect to our server instance through our local terminal okay, and we will control that how or what different programs we need to run. Okay. Now we also have to keep our code base and we want to do it in a version control system. So I generally prefer GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab. So we have got our code on the GitHub server and we will push all the changes that we make to the logic for our node.js through the local terminal, we will push it in our github server and when we have to update this code on the server on our Ubuntu machine, we will pull this code from the github server. So I have created an engine where we are going to push the changes and pull it on the remote server and then we will restart the node application to get that new logic up and running. Okay. Now we have developed our application that can be accessed by the APIs and we can manipulate that APIs. Okay. Now for the system of the node server, okay, what I use, I use Node.js and a framework on top of it Express.js. Okay. And I write this application in the TypeScript. TypeScript provide the type safety for our JavaScript. Okay. So I like this TypeScript, so I use it. Okay. Now in the TypeScript, major things that I use for my application, okay, I use the JWT JSON web token. So this is for authorization. Okay. And then I use the role based APIs. For example, admin have will have an access to certain APIs and a client can have an access to other sort of APIs. So I use the role based APIs. I have controller for each endpoint. For example, if you want to access the list of mentors, so I have controllers for that. And I use Mongoose to connect with my MongoDB instance. Okay. So this we will discuss further in some other video. So this is the system that we have developed. So now you can understand in the production server you have got various components that help to develop APIs which are secure and scalable. Okay. And also I mentioned that Node.js we have got two things logic and data. Okay. And data is from MongoDB and logic we can update. Now we can have multiple instances of Node.js. Why I need that? For example, I am using AWS free tier okay? so that I can use this single machine to serve various services. For example, we have got our for example backend APIs at api.wagesmymotivation.com. We can have our website as www.wagesmymotivation.com. We can have our development server at api.dev.wagesmymotivation.com. All these three servers can be running on the same machine. Okay? They will be running on different ports, for example, 3001, 2 and 3. So now NGX role is to see that what endpoint the client has been accessed to, okay? what is the subdomain that it has access to and route 53 translates all these C names into the same machine and this NGX then 
translates that which services it should go to okay so it will route the for example your api request to the node 1 your web request at www at node 2 this will then serve for example apis and your website so that's why i use nginx okay so this is the system design for your backend system that i have used okay so in coming videos we will see each component in detail so do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button so that when we bring out the videos you will get the first thank you